Hi, this is Richard C. I'm a math tutor here at WiseAmp, and I'm answering a question submitted by a student. Uh, here we're going to graph a piecewise function. And um, you see piecewise functions in Algebra 1, Algebra 2. You'll see them on standardized tests like SAT and ACT. So this is a topic that you want to get pretty comfortable with. So let's start this and see how comfortable we can get with it. OK. OK, so we're going to graph this guy. Let's do a quick sketch here. We'll start with the line. It has an intercept at positive 2. And it has a slope of negative 2. So when y is 0, well, I'm sorry, when x is 0, y is 2. It's always good to get the intercepts here. And when y is 0, we're going to get, let's see, y equals 0, which is equal to negative 2x plus 2. So negative 2 equals negative 2x. So x is going to be 1. So when x is 1, y is 0. So here's a 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is a 1. And this is defined anywhere where x is less than or equal to 3. So at 3, let's plug in 3 here. What's f of 3? It's going to be negative 6 plus 2, which is negative 4. So at 3, it's going to be negative 4. Put a 4 here. And here we are. And then we can sketch a line. The important thing is that this is a closed dot here at 3 because it's in, because the equal sign over here causes us to put a closed dot here. And then on the other end of the line, we've got an arrowhead because this has no left end point. See, this is whenever x is less than or equal to 3. So this goes on and infinitely out in this direction. And then when x is greater than 3, y is negative 1. So here's a 1 here. So we have an open dot here. And like that, y is equal to negative 1 when it's greater than 3, which is what causes this open dot. Okay, so now we can answer the question. Now that we have this graph, evaluate the function when x is 5. Well, when x is 5, we're all the way out here. So f, f of 5, we'll write f of 5 is equal to negative 1. You could do it without the graph. You could just plug 5 in here, and you'd see you're in this lower part of the definition for the function. Usually we put it behind a big bracket like that. And because 5 is in this part of the domain, then negative 1 is the answer. So there's our. And then f of 3, this is the tricky one. f of 3 is going to be negative 4 because of that closed dot. Again, if you're coming in here and your value is 3 for x, you're going to stay on this top line because this is when x is equal to 3 as well as less than 3. So you'd plug in 3 here and you get negative 6 plus 2, which would give you negative 4. Okay, so that's how you do it by hand. I'm going to... Um, you can also do this on Desmos, which is what I'm going to show you. I think it's good for everybody to get up to speed on Desmos because this is what 
you'll be using on the digital PSAT in October and on the digital SAT uh, next March. So let's take a look at what we can do on Desmos here. And a lot of teachers are using Desmos uh, as well. And it's just become really popular. So let's just take a look at that just for fun. And you can see that it's pretty much the same graph. Desmos does a nicer job. You do have to go through extra effort to get this dot down here, which is where we want it. That's where we want our filled dot. I don't know how to put an open dot here. Um, maybe one of these days I'll figure that out. But I do know how to put a filled dot here. And um, I'll look into that open dot question. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just don't know off the top of my head. But it's also just nice to confirm this, you know, on a graph. Uh, you can do this on your Texas Instruments graphing calculator also. You can actually graph uh, piecewise functions on there. It's just kind of tedious, and there's no convenient way for me to show you on, online. So there it is. I hope this uh, solution was helpful to you, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.